this afternoon we're really privileged to have uh, Sensei Chris Kadamian, who's made it up here all the way from beautiful downtown Burbank. And uh, <laughs> beautiful downtown Burbank. And uh, uh, we go back to ancient times. Yeah. So Dave's going to give you a really good instructional sequence. And at this point, I'll turn the microphone over to Mr. Sensei Chris. They're all yours. Thank you, Sensei. Yes. 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 OK, well, thank you for having me. Uh, Burbank is not quite as far as uh, Florida. But uh, and I know there's a couple here from Florida, but uh, I'm happy to be here. I've known Sensei Kirby, I feel like, my entire life. Uh, when I was young, uh, I was always fascinated with martial arts, and I actually started doing martial arts before I can even remember. My grandfather was a wrestler, so I started off with uh, grappling. And uh, <clears throat> so Sen uh, Sensei Kirby, as, as you know, likes to write books. <laughs> so I got a hold of one of his books. I think it was in my early teen years. And then lo and behold, I realized he teaches in Burbank, same town, same town I live in. So uh, uh, I actually trained at his dojo for a while and, and really respect uh, what he did and what he does and what he continues to do. There's many martial artists that already you know, quit after a certain age or they kind of fade off and he's still going strong. He just telling me he's writing another book, which is fascinating. <laughs> and uh, we kept in touch, so I'm always happy to be here and help and uh, share some of my knowledge. So um, I don't need to go into my background too much. We're here to train. <laughs> but essentially, uh, we're doing gun and hopefully knife defenses. We'll see if time allows. I know you have another sensei tomorrow that's doing knife defenses. So I'm going to do gun in case we don't get the knife. And you're going to cover that anyway. So what I'd like to do today, uh, yeah, I have a whole bag full of weapons there, so you can start pulling them out, honey. Yeah. Yeah, the, I didn't do doing knife defense, but it's a formal oh, okay. uh, uh, kata, Aikido kata. Okay. So uh, it's not um, sort of rip and slash defense. Okay. So th the main thing I want to start with is just to preface it. Um, I was having a conversation at lunch about karate and jiu-jitsu and this and that. For me, it's all the same thing. Budo is budo or bujitsu. So it involves grappling, kicking, punching, and weapons, depending on the arena. You can choose to tailor your training one way or the other, whether you're pursuing sport, self-improvement, combat, whatever the case is. But I've just you know, come to a point where you know, I bring it all together as one thing. So whether I'm kicking, punching, or grappling, in my mind, it works the same way. So I want to introduce you to that a little bit today with our gun defenses. Um, just as a reference point, there's five concepts I focus on, and this is how I teach it. So uh, first concept is the use of gravity, which means lowering your base. Uh, the second one is the use of your hips. You've got to turn your hips before you move. The third one is angles. We like to move in 45 degree angles. I also trained in Aikido for quite some time, so I like the Aikido angles, especially with the sword and everything. And then thirdly is how to generate power. So we generate power by push and pull and that's where the punching concept comes from and the idea is if we just do this we're working one half of our body if we're doing if we're pulling same thing we're using one half of our body so but if we target just like shooting a gun imagine a laser sight this way here if you target this way the faster you pull this the more effort you put here the energy transfers to the other side and you engage your whole body that way. And then lastly, the fifth one is what we call four corners. And the four corners are the outside of your shoulders and your hips. If you were to draw a line, it's essentially a square. And you always keep your arms in the four corners. Aikido follows the same concept. And the idea there is, is that's where you're the strongest. So if I'm here, whether I'm grappling or kicking and punching, if I go outside of my four corners, the part becomes isolated. Now I have to depend on the power of the part rather than the power of the whole. So these five concepts, I believe, are universal through all good martial arts, if you apply it. And that's the basis that we use. OK, so um, any questions before we start? Is there anything? I'm here for you guys. So uh, you know, not to 
you know, teach what I teach. I'm here for you. I'm, I'm well aware of the Budoshin curriculum, so I want to try to tailor it for that. But I want to make sure you guys get what you want out of it. So we're going to start with gun defenses. Is there anything um, specific you guys are looking for to get out of it or improve on? Say, you know, don't hold back on knife defenses because of what's going to Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I usually get yelled at for not holding back. So <laughs> I remember after one Budoshin camp, uh, Sensei Kirby came up and said, maybe you shouldn't teach something so violent. You know, <laughs> so, uh, okay, all right, so a couple of different guns here. I'm just going to grab it here. Most of our guns here are semi-automatic, but I also brought a revolver. I don't know who shot a gun before, uh, but just to go over the differences, of course, these, none of these existed in ancient times. <laughs> so we practice traditional arts for the most part and we teach gun defenses, which is kind of odd. But the reality is, this isn't what's going to hurt you. This is what's going to hurt you, the person pulling the trigger. Okay, so you got to stop the person, not the gun, not the bullet. And, and so that's, that's kind of the mindset you have to go in on. One of the things you have to remember is this is a projectile weapon. So distance is your enemy. If you come, if you're at a distance, they have the advantage, assuming they can shoot straight. Okay, so you have to be able to close the distance when you do that. The second thing you have to remember is the differences between guns. So a revolver uh, usually has six bullets in the cylinder here. So if you hold the gun this way here and actually press on the cylinders, it can't fire. Okay, the difference between that and the semi-automatic is if you hold the slide here, it can still fire if there's one in the chamber. The, um, bullets sit here, they're spring-loaded, so each time it fires, the slide goes back and forth, one bullet gets up here. Now, you don't know if somebody pulls a gun on you, you don't know if there's one in the chamber or not. You see it in the movies, it's, you know, before, you know, they're there and then all of a sudden they put the slide back. Well, wasn't it loaded before you went in? <laughs> but for movies, the sound sounds good. And also, when you take the gun away, you should always check to see if there's a bullet in it, you know, if you're going to reverse it on somebody. Third thing, and then we'll start. The third thing is, um, you're more than likely you're going to burn your hand if the gun goes off, okay? So these things get very hot. If you ever see a gunshot in slow motion footage, there's like this much fire that comes out of it. Well, that generates a lot of heat. So when you go to hold the gun, if it fires, then you're going to burn your hand. But better to walk away with a burned hand than a bullet inside you or somebody you care for. Okay, so we're going to start with um, a takeaway that's based on punching. So with punching, you see in karate, you know, people stay here. One, two, three, this way here. Or one, two. Okay, it seems very stiff, you know, very, uh, you know, who's going to fight that way? It is, but what you're also learning is this. And then later that turns into uh, grappling. So Okinawan karate has all that in it. It's just people don't practice it that way. So this is based on the push and pull concept, this first takeaway. So I'm going to use you, sir, if that's OK. <laughs> OK, so we're going to do a semi-automatic here. I'm sorry, OK. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're going to start with this with this type of a uh, attack here. So uh, you, we see today a lot of times what what police are calling active shooter scenarios. So you're doing something. Somebody comes in already is shooting. They're not coming up to rob you. It's a very different scenario. <laughs> okay. So this is kind of a hold up and I don't think I need to say it here, but I always like to, is if somebody is threatening your life or somebody you care for, uh, give them what they're asking for. Everything is replaceable. <laughs> you know, we don't want to let pride get, get in our way. Give them what they, what they need. But if it looks like they're going to shoot you anyway or they're a little bit unstable, then you've got to try to do something. It just happened in Brazil last week, right before the Olympics started. They tried to uh, rob a Russian diplomat. They actually hit his car on the street, dragged him out, and somebody held a gun. 
well, apparently this diplomat was trained, probably in Sistema or something. And uh, he was able, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, he was able to, to take the gun and, and shoot him with his own gun, you know. So um, I probably would have just given him whatever they wanted. But so this is only as a last resort. So you're going to hold the gun up to me this way. And, and we'll, work on, we'll work on closing the distance, but essentially if I'm this far, I'm not going to try something. I want to be right here, preferably as close as possible. And if this is in a more of a crowded situation, you're already going to have this because they're not going to stand across the parking lot and say, you know, <laughs> and, and put a, basically a gun to your head this way. So what you're going to do is you're going to use a push and pull concept. And this is a good scenario if you're in a narrow uh, uh, if you're on a, a bus or if you're in a, a small alley or if there's people around you and you don't really have the option to move back or to move forward. So what you want to do is you want to get your hands about the same level as the gun is, okay? You don't want to go big, you know, you want to seem, you know, kind of this way here and, and, you know, as far as eye contact, keep your head down but at least maintain, you know, some eye contact so you know what it is. Rule number one, get out of the way. So what you want to do is get out of the way this way here. So if the gun goes off, at least hopefully a person behind you doesn't get shot. <laughs> but, okay, so from here, and now I'm going to do the same thing as if I'm going to punch this way, okay? Uh, except I'm going to punch up forward. So it's going to be this way here. So from here, I'm going to come in, grab here, and then put some distance. And of course, at some point, I want to check to see if there's a bullet in here. So a little slower, what I'm doing is I'm slightly stepping out of the way. I'm grabbing the wrist, and then I'm coming in underneath here. Now, it's a punch. So I'm going to grab here, and this is the key here. Everybody is going to focus here. But this is the key. I have to be able to pull this towards me here. So this, once it's here, you're going to go as if you're punching him here in the nose. And if you do, you do. Okay? And then from here, reverse it, back up, and then we'll work on some voice commands too to bring the person back down. Um, this is a habit for me. I used to train law enforcement, um, and there were accidents because in practice, he always handed the weapon back to the assailant and that actually happened <laughs> you know in real life so they stopped that practice so now I know it's a hassle but we just put it down here and you're gonna have to go get it each time unfortunately so it's up to you how you want to practice that's just my mentality uh, <laughs> okay so any questions on that yes for safety issues straight finger not in the car. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, don't keep your finger in the in the trigger area because you'll break it. Okay, need to see it again, or we're good. You're twisting the wrist a little bit as you pull. I'm basically doing this. So from here, I'm doing this. So I'm coming down this way here. Here. Okay. Yeah. One more time. Sure. So from here. Uh, you want to do the other side, it might come out better. No, no, we don't need to switch places. Okay. Yeah, I can do both sides. <laughs> okay, so from here, you're going to come across one, two. From here, pull from here, punch from here, and then back up. Yes, you're going to pull this one down and this one up. So again, essentially, you're doing this punch here. Okay, so let's try that. Thank you. There's a bunch of guns there, help yourself. For this one, start practicing with the gun pointing towards the head or the neck area, okay? Let's not do it from the stomach. Um, I'll, I'll work through it with you later. It's a little bit more difficult to learn it from a stomach position, so hold it, hold it up to about the neck level there. So now we have an option. This is the preferable position. Hold the gun up. Okay, so now this time it's going to be a little bit lower here, so we'll work on different heights, all right? Same situation here. I want to adjust my hand so it's the shortest distance between the guns here. And this time, instead of kind of doing this and going forward, we're going to go off to the... Okay, well, that's okay. All right, I'm not going to hold a hand back to you. <laughs> okay, so from here, I'm going to go off to the side and come in this way 
hit and then back up. So same thing here. One, control the wrist. Now it's a kick and punch situation. Uh, I'm sorry, pull, pull and push situation here. So from here, this is the key here. And I'm going to come in and release it this way here. Strike him and then back up. Okay? You don't want to be too far out here because now again he can adjust his situation and then it's going to be a, a challenge so just really close just right here and that's okay if that happens too okay so from here one two and strike all right let's try that variation also so think of it as grappling okay so if i if i've held him here Okay, how am I gonna how, how am I gonna get Kazushi here? How am I gonna get him off balance? Pull and push, right? So I have to either go forward and back or side to side. So from here, if I want to get him off balance, the key is this one here. The key is this one, and then this one lifts up. Now I can take him down or whatever hip throw, whatever you're gonna do. So this is where it's at. This is the control. If you, I'll, I'll reverse it here. If I pull here and I try to use this, see if he's strong, just come down on me now. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to hold him probably. So, but if I control him with this, now this is just my steering and this is, is my base down here. Okay? So it's the same thing with the gun. The one that's pushing is doing less of the work. This one's all about speed. This one is about the power. Same concept. Okay, so try to think of it that way. That might help. <laughs> all right, let's continue. But let's start with Kote Gashi. Okay, so that's a little, might be a little bit easier. Okay, so Kote Gashi here, what would I do? you know, for the same defense. Same thing, right? I don't want to do this, I might still get shot. So I still have to get out of the way here. Next thing I want is I want Kazushi. If I don't have Kazushi, he's in balance, I'm going to be muscling the arm. Okay, so what I want to do is get out of the way and drop him this way. Now this one comes in underneath, takes him, to, you're right? <laughs> okay, come down this way here. I don't even have my hand on the gun. So if he wants to shoot himself, he's welcome. Now I can take it out of his hand. Okay. So from here, same level, drop him down, come in, and back up. Same thing with one hand. <clears throat> and part of this, um, some of us have smaller hands than others, right? That's why I like using bigger guys because if I can make it work on him with smaller parts, then I know it's probably okay. So same thing from here, one, two, this way here. Okay. You guys know that one, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's, let's start with that. I'll give you a variation of that and then we'll back into what we did in the beginning. Okay, yes, thank you. I'm seeing different variations of Kote Gashi, which is fine, you know, here and then here, that's okay. But um, think of this more of as a combative situation. It's going to have to happen very quickly. There might be other people around. So what you want to do is, once you're here, instead of pulling him back with this hand, turn it right into him so you can potentially shoot back right from this position here. So the only difference is, and it's a different approach, the same thing, but I'm stepping into him here. See, if he gets shot, he gets shot. And now I have the power of my body to use rather than just my hand. See, with this, it's, it's, I'm very disconnected here. Okay, so with this, now, pop, I can come down and, because Kote Gashi, you're really, trying to break his wrist okay you're not gonna you're not gonna do a fancy fall this way here you know we're trained to do fancy falls uh, for safety the person on the street isn't gonna fly like that so what I want to do is set it up so that so that um, I'll do this side <laughs> 
So I step in, take his center, because now I can, I have a power over him here. I can control my center and he can't. So I want to set it up so it's wound tight. Now whether I use my elbow or, or this, it's already set to go. That bone's going to break. Okay, it's, it's my, <laughs> it's this whole weight against that bone. And if I add my body into it, then I'm just going to break this wrist. Okay, so try stepping in to the person and then turning the other way. Okay, now watch. Karate, how does that play in? I come in this way here. Now I'm turning this way, so it's the same thing, and then I can take it out. Same concept, same concept with sword. If I have sword this way here, I first line up square. I don't try to hit him from the side like this. So here, up, and then cut. Okay, so legs. Thank you. Looks like that's working for you, more or less. Uh, let's do the gun here. Okay, so now let's work on, let's stick with Kotegashi, okay? So now it's your stomach here, or it's the side here, you had a teller machine. This is my, you know, always think about going to a teller machine here, or it could be here, or it could be here, you know? So you don't know, so let's do all those situations. So when it's lower, this becomes potentially a little bit more of a problem. So you have to keep your hands here. So you have to kind of slouch because if your hands are here and you're upright, it looks like you're going to do something. So you're going to be here this way. And you can come in and do the same thing, except this time you have a couple of things. So with a taller person like this, I would push this right into the groin here. Okay, or from here I can come up this way here and then bring him down. Okay. If I'm on the side, here this way, so how are we gonna do Kotegashi from here? This is gonna take too long for me to turn this way and grab. So we're gonna use this hand, this hand here, and then come in and take him down. So watch it from this side here, one. And now I keep this going, I gotta maintain contact here because if he moves, I gotta move with it to redirect it until the other one comes in. And I like elbows, so I can easily do an elbow situation here. Where's that dot? <laughs> All right, so we're here, he's got a gun to the back of my head. Okay, so I may not know left side, right side, but again, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go this way this time. I don't wanna do this because I wanna be off balance. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna step back with this leg or forward with this one. Since I know he's taller, I may not know that at the time, but I'm gonna step back here. One, two. Now from here, I'm gonna use gravity to take it away. I'm not gonna do Kotegashi because if I do this, he's gonna gain his balance back. So unless I do it on the way down and it's gonna have a problem. So once I'm here, I'm gonna grab here and don't push, just hold the gun and then hold, hold on with this hand. So as I fall back, the gun is gonna be released this way. Okay, so from here, one, two. See how I keep holding on to his hand as I'm falling? One more time, emphasize that. So from here, one, see, this is what's releasing it, this way here. What else? <laughs> Let's try those, okay? Hand technique of getting control of the Yeah. Yeah. So this one, I'm coming in this way. This one, so this might go off here, right? Mm -hmm. This one. Now this one comes, I keep this as my check, and then I come in and grab this way here, the wrist. 
this way here. And I'm using my thumb a lot because I'm pressing my thumb. I'm using these two these three fingers here. These two I use to really sink into his wrist and I use my thumb to push against him. So he's already gone at this point. Yeah, so kind of like that. <laughs> so if we're standing up, let um, me use this hand here. <clears throat> this way here. So I'm, I'm pulling his wrist in this way here and pushing this like this here. And now that he's compromised, this bone now is isolated. So all I have to do when I turn it, then it puts pressure on the bone. Okay? You can grab the hand this way here. Problem is, is when this is happening very quickly, you're sweaty. He can he can just slide out. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead, harder. Yeah. See, so that's the problem here. Go ahead. Yeah, there's yeah, there's no sliding onto that. Right. Okay, because the roof of his uh, the bottom of his palm here acts as the roof of my of, of my fingers. So he's fighting himself. His hand is the top of the can. Basically, he can't come out. Okay. Yes. All right. Try him. Hopefully that gives you a little better concept or a little a different approach, uh, pluses and minuses and everything. So ultimately it's whatever you feel comfortable with, but understanding the science gives you options. So science is consistent, so how you apply it is up to you. I always say martial arts is three parts, or it should be, you know, science, art, and philosophy. All those three things have to work together. So information our sensei passes on is the science and part of their philosophy, you know, maybe, but the art is ours. So we all learn the same thing. If we all learned how to uh, paint, you know, on, the, on a canvas and then our teacher takes us out and says paint this tree, our painting is going to look a little bit different. Well, we learn the same science, we're using the same tools, why does it look different? Because we interpret what we see and what we do through the filter of our philosophy, you know, how we see the world. And so, you know, I never encourage people to try to copy somebody else and how they move and how they do things, but learn their science because their science is sound. Um, and you have other things that are just purely art, you know, very little science, and then things fall apart. All right, so now we're going to work on uh, what happens if the person moves and how we're going to close the distance. <clears throat> so let's work on we move in here, and I'm not quick enough or he's quicker. I grab the gun and I'm going to do a takeaway here. Now he's, the problem is, is if he moves back aggressively, okay, so now I'm going to be shot. So what you have to be prepared to do is hop, okay, so once I'm here, see, wherever he moves, I'm shuffling and moving with him. And just like cars, the reverse gear is always lower than all the other forward gears in the car. So I'll be over, able to overtake him. So as he moves back, see, I'm going to be able to overtake him at some point. So you want to be able to adjust for distance that way in case the person responds. Otherwise, if you try to muscle the arm and he still has balance and he moves, this thing's going to slip out of your hand. All right, now the second thing is, if I'm at a distance here, you're demanding something. What would you like? <laughs> give me something. Give me your wallet. Give me my wallet. Okay, I'll give you my wallet. Don't, don't shoot. I, I have a family. I don't want to get shot. I, I have it right here. And, and I'll, I'll, it's in my back pocket, so please don't. Where's my hand now? The front hand. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> see? And as, as I'm talking, I'm not walking aggressively towards him. him. Right, so I'm, I'm just, and, and using my back pocket or, or you know, if, if it's a woman and you have a purse, um, you know, so you're kind of gesturing because that's where the person's focus is going to go. In the meantime, this hand's getting closer and closer. Okay, so once I take the gun away, now, down, down on the ground right now, on your back, on your back, roll over, hands behind your head. Okay, so you immediately have to turn it against them, you know, so you come across very meek, you know, very afraid with a low voice, but as soon as you get the gun, you know, then you have to, you know, turn it up on them. 
and then at that point you can, you know, unless you're in law enforcement, you don't need to apprehend the person, you can walk away. So I t sometimes what my students do or when I'm teaching workshops, they do that down, down on the ground, and the other person says no. <laughs> okay, so they say, well, what do I do? Well, I first I shoot him in the leg. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is the exercise we do. Pow! Okay, see? He jumped already and it's not even a real gun. That also tells me if it's loaded or not. So you just fire one up on the air. Show them you're serious because I don't necessarily want to shoot this person. Okay? So let's try that. Try the distancing as the person moves back and try at least closing the distance in, talking your way in. All right? My sensei grew up in Okinawa. He's from Japan. And he says, Okinawa after World War II was a rough place. Gangs all over the place, you know, Yakuza, and, and so even little kids were, you know, assaulted for any loose change or money, you know, that they may have. So they learned to get creative. <laughs> and he says in the, in the early days, it was towards the end of an era, so they wore these, uh, you, you've seen them, you know, maybe in movies or shows, or maybe you own a pair, but they're wooden sandals. And they have two blocks underneath. So he says, when we are coming up on a group of older, young Yakuza, you know, guys, we know we're going to get roughed up. And if they had a knife, which was always assumed to be the case, they would take their sandals out and put it like this and just kind of walk like this. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the person came at them with a knife, they would do their karate. So they would just basically block, strike, or scrape. So we're not going to do that here unless you want to. But um, with the knife attack, whenever you teach knife attack, there's usually not here, it looks like, but somebody in the crowd, you know, from the Filipino martial arts, oh, that'll never work. Okay, why? Well, what if somebody does this? Okay, well, yeah. Okay, I could be standing here and somebody comes and stabs me and I'm not prepared for it. Anything can happen. So there's really two approaches. There's a fight and there's self-defense. So if, if I'm in a situation and somebody pulls a knife and goes like this, I have a choice. Cooperate, walk away, or decide to stay and now it's a fight. It's not self-defense anymore. Okay, so Somebody that's robbing you with a knife or is pissed at, a, at a, some kind of a party or a bar or something is not going to necessarily come do this. It's going to be a long stride. It's either going to be a long thrust, long thrust this way or the ice pick attack, you know, this way here, which is generally what martial artists train with. So, but you can have a situation where the person is doing this over and over again. So from a self-defense perspective, there's blunt weapons and then there's edged weapons. So this is an edged weapon, which means it, it's designed to penetrate. And with this kind of a knife, you, you, this is a weapon on the end and you got the edges here. So this can cut both ways, you know, uh, when you do this. So what is the danger? The main danger is your, your main arteries, okay? So you got to protect that. You may get cut, you probably will get cut, but you want to get cut in places that are more muscle and tissue and not veins and arteries because, you know, that has a much more dire consequence. So if somebody if somebody is constantly coming at you, you know, you can do this. Where the gun was, you want it to be close. With this, distance is your friend, okay? This way here. And now at some point, you also want to come in and strike or whatever you're going to do. But if you have the option of this, this is really nice. And I, I won't do it hard, but this gives you an extra level of protection. So if it is a situation where you can't walk away, and, and you have to be able to come uh, to defend yourself or others, always use what's available to you. I know we don't walk around with belts, but sometimes our pants have belts. You can take your belt out and use that as a weapon. Take your shirt off, you know, and use that as protection. So that's number one, and I just want to get that out of the way. So with that, <clears throat> let's see. What do you guys know for knife defenses? What's your typical defense? As you said, protect your arteries, face them like that, tuck out, uh -huh. and protect really dangerous places. And scream knife as loud as you can, at least four times. 
block going through a uh, rear arm lock. Yeah. Uh, okay. So probably Kote Gashi is once again. Mm -hmm. So you have a deep thrust that's coming in, and you're going to come here this way and come up towards them, mm -hmm. right? So let's start with that one, except I'm going to move in in this case. So he comes in one. Now this hand here is going to come in, and I'm going to come right up to his throat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to cut him this way here. There's an artery down here. Bring him across. Turn your head the other way. There you go. So you're going to lock him in place this way here. Okay. Did I get out of the frame there? <laughs> So let's do a little bit slower here. One. Again, like pull and push and pull into the throat. Pull. Lock it up here. Cut. And I'm going to get in underneath his elbow here. This way here. Head other way. I'm going to pull this in. And I'm securing his elbow this way here. Okay? So if I was in law enforcement, I won't do that cutting <laughs> on the way down, but I'm going to hold him here. And you guys can practice this since it's grappling. You're going to come in this way. Take your handcuffs, cuff him here. Then you put your hand on the middle of his back. This way. Okay, stay there for a second. Another thing here. Lock this elbow in. <laughs> Old day samurais had rope. <laughs> okay, so you take the rope up, tie him this way around his neck, and then put a stick through it and stand him up. You all right? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, let's start with that one. Then we'll do a couple of other variations because of the time. So um, let's see. I know you guys do do like an ice pick attack. Okay, so you guys do this one probably, right? Something like this. Okay, so what if he's coming in this way here? All right, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do this, but not over here. A little bit different approach. Okay, so as he's coming in, I'm gonna come in this way as if it's a cross block. So now this hand is gonna go here, okay, knee, and then from here, okay, <laughs> so uh, what I want to do is flip him over, but that's okay, from here I still have control over him, and then I can take the knife, okay, um, let's do it again, so from here, one, Two strike, and you can you can do a rotary throw from here too. That's okay. Just make sure you maintain control over here, back, whatever the case is. Okay. If the person ends up uh, on the stomach, yeah. Okay. If the person ends up on the stomach, you can if you want to, you know, really secure him, make sure he doesn't move again just so you don't get hurt, okay? So from here, you can hop over here and roll him this way here. And in the process, you would break the, or dislocate the shoulder. Yeah. It's one move, so I'm going in this way here, just like a cross block. This way here. This one's reaching in, so don't do this. You have to really get up to your elbow to do this. Now, this is the main defense. You got options here because I can continue to turn this way here. Okay. <laughs> Put the, uh, yeah, lots of lots. Which one? Yeah. Okay, so from here, I'm going to go in here, here. Okay, whatever finish you want to do is up to you. 
All right, so let's try that one for a couple of minutes. Can I take five minutes, maybe for one more? A couple of minutes, okay, we're not gonna have time. All right, I was gonna show you guys a knife drill, but. Nice no, knife drill, there's a flow drill. Oh, yeah. Ah, see, I knew it. <laughs> okay, thank you. We're gonna do this from a reverse grip. There's yours, yeah, yeah. So he's coming at me with the same attack I just did. Uh, we just learned to defend against. So I'm coming in this way, but I'm not gonna cross all the way there, but I am gonna cut underneath the arm. I'm gonna bring this back. Check, cut, stab. Cut again. Now you're gonna do the same thing. So block, block, cut, move me through, cut me here. Stab. Now bring it across the top like this. And now you're going to hit me. So one, two, strike, block, cut up. Uh huh. Bring it through. Use this hand to check. Make sure. Stab. Cut across. Cross it. Right. And now we do it again. <laughs> okay. Try it. <laughs> uh, I hope uh, your time was well spent. I want to thank Sensei Kirby for inviting me, letting me share his floor. Uh, and uh, I met, had met some of you guys before, and I'm happy to make your acquaintance if this was your first time. Uh, thank you for being good sports, especially thank you for my uke for bearing through that. <laughs> He's got very good potential. So any questions? I hope it gave you a little different approach to, you know, similar things. Like I always say, there's really no new things, just a different take on the same old thing. So ultimately take what works for you and just make sure the science is sound and, and there you go. I want to work on the, the push-pull and the wrist bend, which is really effective. Yeah. It's kind of a shock. What's happening here? It's got a nice strong grip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it well it's the science too, you know the chi <laughs> Chinese called it chin na, you know, so it's all, you know, grappling techniques and uh you know, people thought of these thousands of years ago. I always say if it's not working, it's probably you not understanding it correctly. If things don't work in combat, you can't pass them on because well you die. So <laughs> the only thing that get passed on are the things that work. You know, so that's why lineage is very important, you know, because if it was passed down, then you know there's value there, and it's up to us to explore it, discover it, and make it work for us. You got to be very careful making up new things because uh, most of us will never go and test it in combat against multiple opponents and things like that. So we got to trust what's been given to us and then maybe give it, maybe change the workout so it fits more the modern culture. In the old days, people, this was their whole life, you know, from childhood, so we don't live that way anymore. Okay, thank you very much. Us. Thank you, Sensei. Us. I'd like to present you with a certificate of appreciation. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'll have to have you back again. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>